over the top. You know, how you doing, Doug Rice? Six oh one. Evening time. Thursday. Thursday is always awkward. It's an awkward day of the week. You know, it's not quite Friday. Just got over Wednesday. Come on Thursday. You're ready for Friday. So that you can hit Saturday. But it's Thursday. Thursday, 31st, last day of the month. We march forth into April. You understand? You get it? You get it? Tomorrow's Friday. That's all I'm saying. This is the Doug Wright Show. Hit you with the double whammy today. Yes, I did. Two posts of TikTok Lives on YouTube Live. It was amazing. I don't know if it was amazing. I'm just... Messing with you. I hope everybody enjoyed it and shared it and liked it. And here I am. Now listen. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't a damn thing funny. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is going on in the world? Why does it matter? Why does it matter what I do? Why is this important? I'm going to tell you why. First, the kingdom. That is the primary focus. Now, <clears throat> you might find this hard to believe, but I'm like this for real. And I'm tame on these lives to preserve the count that I have to keep achieving to do them. So, when I tell you shit's fucked up, you better believe it. That's why I do these things for one year, I've been doing this, and I'm going to keep doing it till kingdom come, because that's the point. That is the primary focus. Kingdom of God. Second, who are we? Why do I do this? First, the kingdom. Second, who are we? Well, if you want to examine that, let's, let's look into it. Well, let's look into it like a fraction, right? First, how do we get here? How did everyone around us get here? And uh, how are we treated today? Just those three principal objectives I want to tackle. So, why do I do this? How do we get here? I address Hebrews. Folks who are here for the transatlantic slave. Us. Not Immigrants, not Africans, not anyone except Hebrews. Those individuals that identify with being in fields picking cotton in the South. How did we get here? Were we invited? No. Did we, did we toil and get all needed to come here and finally... Become United States. No, we didn't do that. And why does it matter? I'll tell you why it matters. It matters because they want to cancel it so. They want to forget how we got here, but they want to remember how everybody else got here. They, they're selective in their history. They want to pay particular attention to forefathers. But they don't want to pay particularly attention you know, into how we work in that matrix. I'm trying to figure it out, folks. How do we get here? Why is it important? Why do I do this? What are they hiding? Why are we treated this way? And why do they want us to ignore it? And when we talk about it, do they shut us down? You must pay attention to the coming months and the coming weeks. They're setting the stage to let motherfuckers do what they want. Need you to understand that. I've put it in print. I've said it. I'll keep saying it, folks. The danger is real. And pretty soon, even, even I won't smile on my lives. So, that's what I do, what I do. And what do I do? Well, Black News! That's it, all day, every day. You know, it's a, it's a thing. So I look up black news. 
with the with the sole intent of hoping that Hebrews, family, tribe of David, Negroes, pay attention to their circumstances and pay attention to what's happening around you so that you can at all times avoid caucasity, which is a phrase that I will someday somehow trademark, but we'll get to that. So, Black News, the Nick Bro News Network, I am Doug Rice. Thought I'd do a little intro with some background so that everybody kind of knew. Uh, people have asked for that. I'm talking to folks who want to know. 6.07 in the evening, Black News is the subject, the topic, and the first thing. If you remember that I have to look at is a teacher, someone who taught at Michelle Obama's school. was fired recently. Do you know what this teacher did? Now, mind you, she is a teacher, white teacher, at Michelle Obama's former elementary school. And <clears throat> let me just tell you what she did so that you have clarity. This teacher saw to it that she would hang in effigy, small doll resembling Nick. Now, why she did this, I don't give a fuck. You understand? She could have been expressing, she could have been teaching, she could have been joking, she could have been serious. I don't give two and three quarters damn why this being chose in the elementary school. To hang in effigy a doll resembling a Negro. What is going through their minds? What's going through their minds? I'm crazy. You know, I start off each show just with just the most the most hint and fragrance of doubt. Should I keep doing this? Is there cause to get on this fucking thing every day and do this day in? And then I read some crazy ass shit that begs the question. What's on their fucking minds and why can't I ask? Let me ask you, doesn't that seem odd? I mean, it's right there along with the sociology teacher that said two students in her classroom who were Negroes to raise their hands. And then hold your hands there. If it weren't for the Constitution, the students with their hands raised would be my field slaves. She said this to our children. So this one you stack right next to that. Why our school? Why our school? Why this sudden influx of conduct most unbecoming an educator. I just can't conceive some of the things I hear go on in front of our goddamned children. And the only thing that comes to my mind is, oh, but if it were yours, how you would act. I mean, if by some strange osmosis in reality, one of your children was found to be needing a strip search. And this female child was said to have exposed herself in a manner that you, my friends, find most offensive. If it were your child, let me tell you how many necks would snap from the brakes put on to the whole fucking fracas. I will tell you right now, every school administrator would have whiplash. That's how fast shit would fucking stop in that fucking school. Do you let her be a Negro? Has to expose her privates. You know, I need you to understand this. In these schools and some of the things you're... The shit wouldn't even be thought of. It wouldn't even be considered. No one would even bring it up. It would be laughed out of the room, the entire thought, the idea, the concept, even if you 
suggested it, you might be dismissed. Some of the things that they do to our fucking children that they themselves would not endure. Welcome to America. All right. So, let's see what we got. Hope everybody is doing well. I am. Thank you so much for asking. So, uh, Michelle Obama, other black leaders praise historic anti-lynching law. <laughs> it's historic because it has to be a fucking law. That, my friends, is really the most disturbing aspect of this. Also, um, some say more change is needed. So, Michelle Obama, other black leaders, stop! When you say black leaders, trust me and believe you mean black leaders of black people. Let's just cut that to the chase, because I don't want there to be in confusion. First, our leader isn't here yet, but he's on the fucking way. That's first thing, okay? Right now, we don't need to be led. What we need to be is fucking attentive and prepared. Oh, Doug's crazy. I know, right? Right? I'm through, but... Ask yourself this. You know, Michelle Obama, other black leaders, who? Name them off. What? Uh, Ramal. Who else? Who else? Come on. Jesse Jackson. Come on. Snap. Snap. Who are our black leaders, right? You, you see them. You see them. You hear them. You feel them. You see them. They talk. They talk. They got shows. They're making millions. They've been doing this a million. These leaders. So tell me this. Where the fuck are they leading us to? You never thought, you didn't, we just taught them black leaders, but we don't ask where the fuck we're going. That's what's happening. Y'all never really considered that? Tell me this, where are the white leaders? Oh! That, what, oh, I didn't mean to just, are you okay? You okay? Pick your fucking coffee up, you okay? What's wrong? That just hits you different. Uh, you don't even know what to say. Where are they? Where are they? What? Biden? What? Biden? Trump? Who? Mitch McConnell? Who's where are they at? We, are, we can identify the black leaders. We don't know where the black leaders are leading black people, but what's more? Oh, what's more? There's no white leaders. Where are they? I don't see them. Where are they? What? Y'all know how fucked up shit is here? Do you know how fucked up shit is here with the Asian leaders? Oh! Oh, you're starting to get the Oh, right, right. Where are the Mexican leaders? Hispanic leaders? No? Where, where are they? I need to identify those individuals. But we can name, right? Why do we need leaders and where the fuck are they leading us to? Because you see, the others don't have leaders because they're not going any fucking where. They don't need to be led. Oh, you're starting to get it now. I'm starting to understand why I'm a little bit incensed, why it's all such a fucking farce. It's all a fucking joke. First black this. Leaders this. What are you doing? We have one, one leader. And he's on the way. <laughs> King. Call him Yahua, call him, you know, God Almighty. I mean, that's the leader. Not presently here, but on the way. Trust me! Let me tell you something, man. You do know when we pray to Almighty God, we have to go through that mediator, that sacrifice, Messiah, right? Yahushua, I believe, right? Only accessibility to the creator, God Almighty, to he that has set us apart. You understand? That's the only way that we can communicate. Juxtaposed to the whole world being in the power of the wicked one. Keeping in mind, since we pray to God Almighty through that conduit, everyone else, whatever God they're praying to, 
There's no obstruction. Do you want to know how alone you are, Hebrews? Do you actually want to feel the solitude of being set apart on this planet as God's own chosen Hebrew family? You, me, a royal family, alone on the planet, one tether to the creator that we can use, surrounded by nations that have free communications with gods that don't like us too much. You want to feel alone? You don't know how by your fucking self you are, do you, Negro? When I tell you to bring it in, you're surrounded. I'm not talking about those that will certainly come the fuck at us, and I mean shortly. I mean those uh, unseen spirits, those unseen entities that drive those beings unfettered in communication, able to have in some instances, and we know it, direct fucking contact with the very motherfuckers that don't like Negroes. You starting to get a picture now? Huh? Huh? You starting to understand what I'm saying? You know how alone you are on this planet as Hebrews, as the descendants of slaves over the transatlantic slave trade? One lifeline to God Almighty who is en route while gods rule over this world in unfettered communication with their beings who don't like us too much. You don't see where this is going? You don't see where this is going? They're at war with each other because their beings are at war with each other, I'm pretty sure. You know, the gods that they pray to, who knows what game these unseen creatures living for centuries, eons, who the fuck knows what kind of sandbox these beings are in? Right? We know the one supreme almighty God of all creation, that who has set us apart as Hebrews on this planet. And that God is on the way. And he ain't coming to talk. And you better fucking believe it. Too much chaos. Everybody arguing. I'm pretty sure there's shit going on. We don't even see. You know, who knows? <laughs> you know, they've they, they been at it for eons. I don't even know. Some of them mad at each other. Some of them mad at themselves. <laughs> just loving the influence. Just creating a war. All the sexual deviancy. All the proclivities. The hedonistic nonsense. The sick, secret shit we don't see. That is them communicating unfettered with all of those who pray. But Hebrews are here by ourselves with a single rope. Whew. And you better not let it go. Because guess what? Those other gods are always ready to take you in, Hebrews. You are a prized possession. Oh, when the Hebrews pray to a different god, Oh, the lights come on in Georgia. You know what I'm saying? And so many will be so lost, so fast, so quick, so gone, because they don't come to their goddamn senses and understand they are set apart. We are unique. A people of special possession. Hebrews, one family. Not some distorted, congruent tribe of different Clubs? Is that what they call these Power Ranger camps? No. There's one camp. You better believe it. How you doing? So yeah, I just wanted to get on that because you know it just it needed to be fucking said. That's why. Motherfucker don't like it. Get out. Shall we continue? Doug Rice, a little intense, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a all right, so as uh, we continue, oh man, listen, Will Smith and the unfair burden black men face, listen to me, bro, 
There's no unfurled burden. You acted a fool, showed your ass, give the Oscar back, go sit your ass down somewhere and shut what they call the fuck up. Give it about a year. And let me tell you something, B. You come back, you're good. That's how it is, man. All you got to do is go sit down and shut the fuck up. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Most forgiving group of individuals when they talk about worshiping a caricature of us. Oh, give it about three, four months. They love you again, baby. You know what I tell you, baby? You just do something that they're going to love, okay? They love you again. Put on a fucking act. Jesus. I mean, I just, you know. CPR rates in black Hispanic community is bias to blame. So basically, they had to throw CPR on people of color, because that's what they obscured this whole description uh, as. Uh, I guess there's a low recovery rate. Yes! Yeah, you know, there's no, no try as hard when we are standing over us with the Clear! <laughs> They might go, ah, does he look like he don't think? I don't know. Uh, okay, let's go. Good. And that's that hesitance that fucking costs us. You don't just fucking make it shit up. Ah, relax. You'll get over it. The black women of Nashville, stop. Halt. That's an oxymoron. There should be none. And if you don't like that, you don't understand. The black women of Nashville stormed the Grammys. What happened? Somebody get arrested? Somebody get smacked? Black women of Nashville stormed the Grammys. Who got smacked? Stop. All right. Uh, what is this? Reclaiming black life and joy in the Trayvon generation. Somebody needs their feelings hurt for that. You know, our victims aren't a fucking headline for you to reach into grab so motherfucker you know what I wish I'd have seen that one I'd have asked this person in my office come in for a minute what you think you're doing what you painting this up so what what are you doing who you think you are I tell you it's not one of us that wrote that that's somebody that needed 6,000 words by fucking deadline yesterday and I put fire on them what you doing man you rewrite that shit don't you call shit the Trayvon Jenner I wish you would I don't even want that to catch. I might get insulted. What's next? George Floyd Federation and generate what the shut the fuck up, man. Leave our suffering out your fucking mouth. Just please don't. Just just say nothing, man. That's what you're doing. Just just keep on fucking walking. Please, can you do that? You you got problems. You got problems. You got you got problems that are coming at you from every fucking direction. The last thing you need to do is refer to anything involving us as a Trayvon generation. I will not comply. I'm not going to cooperate. You understand? That one's going to go. Dare you? Did you pay somebody something? How dare you? I dare. I mean, what is going on? The disrespect is about to get real. You think I'm playing. I said it earlier. I'll say it now. I'll say it again. Y'all ain't going to take me serious till you running screaming from them. <laughs> you are not going to think that what is happening in this country is actually happening until the verbal assaults on Negroes is never ending and always. And then... Then you'll bring it in. Then you might start bringing it in. Then you're going to start taking shit. And though you might live with that, then they're going to start disrespecting those who they say are respectable. And then the shit's going to fly, baby. Bring it in! And I'm going to love every goddamn minute of it. You hear me? See, you don't feel it yet. You don't feel the attitude yet, but it's coming. It's coming with Josh Hawley leading the way. And, and, and folks, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene is bringing up the fucking rear. Cross-eyed little, toe-side little chick. 
you know, helpless little poem. I start on her, don't we? Anyway, everything I'm saying had to be said, just fucking. All right, let's continue. All right, black women in New Jersey are frustrated with politics. Groundbreaking poll finds. Again, with the fucking poll. Again, a groundbreaking poll. So, black, I don't, who? This is not right. I want somebody to call first contact. Y'all got my digits. Y'all are handing out polls, and it's about black people. Can you give a black person a contract? I mean, what are you doing? Okay, look, black women in New Jersey are frustrated with politics. Is that the question? Or black, or look, hey, would you, your sister, you post with politics? Yes, check. No, check. Done. Now, what's the test bet? 300,000? That's cool, bro. Dollar fifty per half up front. Let's do it. <laughs> dumbass shit. Somebody paid for that dumbass shit. A poll. Black, black women are frustrated everywhere. Not just in New Jersey. Yeah, groundbreaking. Oh, something about New Jersey differentiates itself from other areas of this country where black women are not frustrated because I don't believe that. You know what's going on? And I need you to hear this because it's wool being pulled over black women's eyes. They want to woman representative of black women in the Supreme Court, and now the focus is on black womanhood and all things black women. And they act like they know you. That's what, isn't that fucked up? Now you need to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so what do you mean, Doug? Well, as attentive as they are to all the the polls, and all the things they find, all the awards, all the, all the things. As attentive as that is, we still have echoing in our minds the fiasco of what these motherfuckers feel they can do and say to a black woman. And you got nerve with the same fucking mouth to discover that they're frustrated with politics. Who do you motherfuckers think you are? Are you talking to, to yourself? Because it sounds like it. You lauded the accomplishments, black women. Now they are the it topic, and you love every inch of black girl magic. Yes, you do! And I feel you, America! You're putting a black woman on the fucking highest Supreme Court in the land. Whoa! How'd you feel about black women, though? Tell us what your real feelings about confronting a black female and confronting her in a serious manner to ask her serious questions about serious fucking topics. Show me how you fucking treat them! And then you got nerds allotted how much you love. I wish you'd just stop. What are you doing? Oh, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't see that? Because I saw it. I, I watched. Ugliest questions, suppositions, conclusions, accusations, inferences. They fucked her up and she sat there and took it. And what follows is the lot of the strength and determination of black women in America. Well, fuck you. I'm glad you like the show. Okay. I just don't like it. I don't like pretense. Shut the, don't tell me. You, what are you doing? What are you, you produce the struggle, observe it, applaud it, write about it, and just the fucking regurgitated bullshit keeps going. Meanwhile, one of us step back and look at you walk in circles with us leading by the hand, and we're, I tell you, hey! And you look at me and go, you are racist and hateful. No, I'm just telling people what the fuck you doing. Hey! 631. I'm Doug Rice. You know, things can get real serious real quickly, real bad. Real fast.
if you're not at least able to switch, if you're not able to be ready, if you're not packed, if you don't have something that at least gives the indication that you're ready to go, then you're asleep at the fucking wheel. Are you not? Okay. All right, so uh, lots going on. Just to give you a heads up, maybe you don't know. This country is is built on what's called the petrodollar. Okay? Everybody get your fucking pencils. That dollar you hold in your hand, that 20, 80, hundo dog. Sometimes you got that hundo. That piece of currency, that piece of paper. That piece of paper used to be the only piece of paper that you could pay for a barrel of oil. Not ten days ago. It's what it's what props up that ability to use that hundred dollars. Now, lately you've been experiencing what they call a trigger moment. Something that happened. The first time in history. Oil has been bought with something other than that hundred dollars you have in your hand. And let me tell you something. Let me prepare you Hebrews for the future. I want you to think of something being having the legs swept out from under. You ever seen one of them sweeper movies? Ha! You know, movies. Up, right? That is what is happening in real time to the United States. A planned, calculated attack on the U.S. currency to devalue it. Let me just tell you this. Two words describe our current circumstances regarding that endeavor. Would you like to hear them? Here they are. It's done. It's over. The veil has been lifted. Oil was purchased without a dollar, and that, my friends, is that. So what you need to do is prepare for the eventuality that they keep telegraphing. They keep telling you food shortages. They keep telling you gas prices. Insight. Hebrews, hear me. This is smart shit. Biden released the reserves that we have in this country, the gasoline reserves, to ease that amount you pay per gallon. Now listen, it's like putting gasoline on a fucking fire because it will accelerate us into a point where we don't have the ability to buy gas with U.S. dollars. They're going to freeze the United States out of the market. And then what will you do? Here's what's going to happen. Panic will ensue. More likely, the um, midterms will flip the Senate and the House. Caucasity will win a victory unmatched since 2016. Racist sentiment in this country will run wild as inflation creates a dollar out of a hundred bucks. And what will you do? Because there will be desperate people all around you not used to being desperate. And those are the most dangerous motherfuckers on the planet. Pay attention to what goes on in this country. And how you approach things is understand how you got here. That will set the tone for how you stand here. Don't be puzzled why they treat us the way they treat us. They've been doing that. It's just the awakening they don't like. And you know what? 
I don't give a fuck what they don't like anymore. Hmm. <laughs> hey! Let's continue. 636. Uh, I read about this. A guy killed, the police killed a black guy. They, they painted a mural. Federal judge says, take it. They took it off. They sued. Weak. No. Let them paint. Don't paint. Let them paint. Let them paint. Well, don't give them the ammunition needed to simply just do some stupid shit. Judge strikes down parts of Florida election law, saying it used subtle tactics to suppress black voters. Oh, did it now? You know, you know, it's nice. <clears throat> it's nice that they're using subtle tactics now. Who knows what that means? Some psychological, you know, foray, some... You know, maybe in a song, and you throw some, throw some fucking, you know, commercials on TV. You know, some subliminal shit. You know, some shit like that. The subtlety of suppressing black voters, boy, and in Florida, nonetheless, how they've modernized. Let me tell you how they used to suppress votes. They used to take the motherfucker running for office and put him in a tree. So if they're using subtle shit now, it looks like that's a fucking improvement, but they just can't seem to stop. They just can't seem to stop, punk. It's not like it's stopped. It's just more subtle. Well, thank God for subtlety. Let's go. Oh, boy. Here we go. One of Mississippi State's first black football players, Robert Bell, has died. I mourn his lossing. And what did he get for being the first black football player in Mississippi State? Did he, is he getting a state funeral? Is he getting a stipend of some sort? Why well, mention that he's the first black anything as if it means something to be the first black anything in this god-awful place? Why are we doing that? And you know what we do? We swallow that drivel instead of rejecting it. Instead of offhand just going, you know, that's bullshit. What the fuck I need to be... What, he died? What do you fucking... What do you need something to write about? What are you doing? It's like mind control. What the fuck? You know, you take shit away and beat us to death with this hand and write nice niceties with us. And then, what the fuck are you, ambidextrously fucked up? You know, don't say anything about our history in this place. Can we come to that agreement? How about that, folks? Can Yes, 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 yes. I got yeses everywhere. Yes. No more celebration of our suffering. No more admiration of it all. The fucking terror, the horror, the hangings, the lynchings, the castrations. No more looking fondly at strange feud and saying, oh my, it's so terrible. You know what I mean? Don't do that shit, man. You don't want to hear that shit. Shut the fuck up, man. Don't say anything. Don't celebrate anything. Don't do that. Why? It's disingenuous. You don't mean it. You don't know you don't mean it, and that's even worse. Yeah, I know, right? It's 640 in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. You don't even know what might come out of this I'm Doug Rice. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for showing up. Give my props to my folks, my people, my my uh, my team. And you know they're getting tired of me. I know they are. I can tell when people get sick of me, get bored, tired of listening to me. Because as you can see, I can do this until all of you go to sleep. You just sit here in the morning, 6 o'clock, I'll be sitting there going, yep, yep, and then you'll be going, what is this Negro's problem right here? Now, <clears throat> my team, haven't paid them yet because they don't make money. Please support this effort. I've monetized all the YouTube videos trying to pull some money. Haven't even made $100. Monetized on YouTube. I don't know if it's the profanity, but more than likely it is. I'm not going to stop cursing. And so we move the fuck on. But I need to pay these folks. Or something. Even if it's 20 bucks, I just want to pay them. Because now I call them. 
in there. And now the face is like, I got to talk to this dude. <laughs> I was like, mm. I got to call him because I got to sharpen my razor. If I don't, then I can't do this. So support this effort for Detrina and for Antoine Anderson. Oh! That's as good as it fucking gets. Don't ask for no more. Let's continue. All right. Here we go. Uh, Bowser plans $10 million effort to support D.C.'s black homeowners. Really? Right now? Right now? When's November? Oh, in the Washington Post. And you're launching a strike force this summer to form recommendations aimed at... Oh, what the fuck? Was that fucking clickbait? Do you see that? Bowser plans $10 million effort to support D.C.'s black home. Oh, really? D.C. Mayor Bowser launches a strike force this summer to form recommendations aimed at prevent... Shut the fuck up, dude. Shut the fuck up, dude. Go on somewhere. Even when they try, it's a lie. Even when they try, it's a lie. Even with the attempt, there's contempt. You know? It's like, if you did nothing, then we could move. See? Yep. So many of us like trained fucking seals. You know, if they even think there's a salmon, a small fish, they start performing. And then with the black leaders that seem to just stick around year after year after year, look, man, Tell me something. How does Reverend Al Sharpton live with himself? Quite well, I imagine. I mean, this, it's a rhetorical question. How does he do it? No! I'm old enough to know. He was doing this in the 70s, looking like a brother, looking good. You know, just fucking sleep with Al was a boy. Al was a hardcore. Al Sharpton was hardcore. Then he went Hollywood. Then he got skinny, then he got politically correct, then he got his own show, then he got rich, then he got richer. And the trip is, the same shit that this black leader was working on in the 70s is the same exact identical shit this Negro is working on today. And from here to there, he has made a pretty penny. And the bus rolls on. So no, I'm not fond of black leaders. I don't know what a black leader is. Do you? Because until they can tell me where the fuck we are going, they're not leading us anywhere. Don't drop your phone. I love doing that shit. You're like, oh, motherfucker. All right, it's 644. I can talk about Mr. Merrick Garland, feckless wonder, and how he's not doing anything, but I'm betting on Garland now. All bets, I'm putting $100 on Garland to win. I think he's going to sweep in one day, arrest everybody, shock the world. I'm hoping so, because, damn it, it's just pissing me off. These motherfuckers just walking around free, and they broke the law. It's not like they suspect... I mean, Donald Trump berserk the law, sa ha ha nap, all the way, and he's like, come get me. And ain't nobody come get him. And you know, he fired a shot. DT fired a shot over the bow, didn't he? He let known, I got secrets. You know, Donald Trump let known in front of a mic through, through Putin, I got secrets, ma. That's why I'm out here. That's why I'm out here. That's what I'm doing to do. And you know, he ain't even dropped a big one. He ain't dropped the one he got on Lindsay, because that's going to be huge. All right! I'm getting my way. I'm still doing this shit. What? Okay. <laughs> it's what happens when you keep scrolling. All right? All right. Now, y'all know I look, I search up the term black news, right? 
So they return everything that has the word black in it, and I've come across a gem. It says, man's penis turned black after he injected it with cocaine. I don't... Whose idea? I don't know. What? Why? I, well, but what? Look, man... That's, nobody stopped you? Nobody, like, suggest, no. So we're going to just stay away from that shit. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. GOP blocks effort to name Tallahassee Federal Courthouse after a trailblazing black judge. The GOP... Block's effort to name Tallahassee Federal Courthouse after trailblazing black judge. Why are they in their feelings about us? It's just getting, it's getting, uh, it's getting redundant. It's getting noticeable, isn't it? Isn't it a little bit, a little bit noticeable, I'd say? Isn't it, is it, there's a, there's a driving force behind the GOP that has the the fragrance of right wing white nationalism. It's just I can smell the stench of them. You know, odiferous, just continuing. Anyway, I just you know that's that's a little. Damn, you don't want to name a building after someone. What's wrong with you, man? Who's gonna care? Nobody's going to care. You know what they want to prevent? The ceremony. That's some insidious, fucked up mental right there. Man. Did you know? <laughs> Did you know that we, as Hebrews, as black people in this country, as they call us, could not buy white wall tires for a minute? Or two. And I understand it's because to express that kind of improvement in your life is an affront to white males at that time. I was taken, I saw the video and said, what? They wouldn't let you buy white wall tires because it signified advancement in the face of caucasity and they couldn't stand it? And you think these beings are not dead and gone, do you? Because they are right fucking beside you. As you go to work, as you, you come from work, as you, as you stand in line, there they are. You don't think that the individual has a direct impact on how your children will develop. I give you, ladies and gentlemen, the children of Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. Yes. All right. There. I just said it. It's on there. It's in there. We're done. Okay. I'm about done. I'm good. All right. Uh, I can't say enough about the support you guys give. Well, I could, but, you know, it'd be still too much. No. I'm Doug Rice. 6.50 in the evening. I appreciate your time, your consideration, your attention. I appreciate everything about your blackness, your Hebrewness. Your negrosity. I love each and every one of you. Family. Don't you ever forget it. All right. Got to go. Uh, you know, I wish I had something to plug. wish I had something to say. But, you know, there's always something new. My coffee, it's still in there, you know. And everything seems set. Got no outro music. But, hey, you folks, I want you to take it easy. easy. Uh, wait, hold on. Oh, I never forgot. Listen, <clears throat> tomorrow, as we know, is Friday. Red Letter Day, Friday. I love Friday. Shit, I don't even work. I love Friday. You know, I love Friday for you. That's how much I love Friday.
And I want you to enjoy your Friday. I truly want you to enjoy your Friday. You must enjoy your Friday. I, I fucking insist that you enjoy it. There is a recommendation that I have given from time to time. I've been known to promote what I consider to be a frame of fucking mind as you go about this penal colony for Negro. If you got any out there amongst them, you gotta show your face. Your countenance must be seen. If it has to fucking happen, For the love of God, for all things Hebrew, can't you just do me one favor? Please. You get that goddamn grin off your faces. Good evening. You guys have a wonderful evening. I've got to go.